Impala Films presents Haunted, the audio drama. Season 2, Episode 3, What the Spirit Saw. Part 2 of 2. Written by Mark Smith. Please shut up. For the love of all that is holy, stop snoring. (sighs) Hello? Huh. No breeze. There it is again. Cheap aftershave. Totally murdered in her own home. For more, don't touch that dial. Ah! Oh, shh! You! Shh! You're the one creeping up on me. You're the one yelling. What are you doing sneaking out here? I was looking for you. Oh. Why? There was a cold spot in the bathroom. I was wondering if you knew where the temperature gun was. It's there, um... Wait, your room has an ensuite? Yeah, it's bloody freezing, though. Oh, God, you really looked out with your room, didn't you? I, I have... <sighs> that. Right, shall we temp gun your room? Wait, what? The, uh, the cold spot in the bathroom. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> the third rosé really hit you, didn't it? Shut up. It feels perfectly normal in here. It was in the middle of the room. Okay, well, the tiles are cool, but it feels like regular room temp. Yep, it's 21 degrees. Is this just another classic case of Abigail exaggerating? Like the spider in the bathtub that was the size of my hand? Dan. I mean, oh, oh, wow. So hell finally froze over, huh? Dan. Yeah? Dan. 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 Dan! What? Wake up. What? Um, What what time is it? I don't know. Why did you wake me up? It's not even light out. I woke you up when you started spooning me in your sleep. Oh, shit. Did I? Um, sorry. Hands on your side of the bed, deputy. Are you two all right? Just barge in without knocking, why don't you? I heard yelling. Lover boy here was having a nightmare. Oh, what was it? Was it about the case? Or, or the burnt man again? Uh, d- yeah, yeah, the, the burnt man. He was pointing at me, d- saying stuff. We need to get to the bottom of these dreams. <sighs> yes, we do. Definitely, yes. So, um, uh, what are you doing up so late? Or early? What time is it? It's 1am. Ugh. I'm going back to sleep. Keep your hands to yourself. (sighs) Why are you up, Abby? Is everything all right? Yeah, I've just... I've got some stuff bouncing around in my head and and there's something about Dave that's just creeping me out. (laughs) Dave? You're scared of Dave? I can't quite put my finger on why, but but something about this is really getting under my skin. No, I, I get it. Look, we aren't firing on all cylinders right now. And it's hard to get much sleep with this one and Julia snoring. I could hear them from my room. (laughs) You think that was bad? Try sleeping next to him. It's like a lawnmower running over a garden gnome. (laughs) Where on earth do you come up with these things? I don't know. It's, uh, I suppose it's a useless talent. (laughs) Well, I like it. It's nice to have an admirer. Yeah. When you two are done awkwardly flirting, would you kindly go the fuck to sleep? (laughs) Go back to sleep, grumpy. Look, while I couldn't sleep, I looked up our ghost and couldn't find anything. So I searched for this address and found this article. Listen, ex-school teacher found murdered in her own home. So Dave was a teacher? No, Dave wasn't the one who was murdered. It was our mystery woman, although not exactly a mystery anymore. Her name was Sonia Bullimore, 
According to the reports, she was sat watching soaps when someone just walked into her home and killed her. They never found the killer. Oh, that's awful. How did she die? Strangled, apparently. Oh, Jesus. So we know who our missing lady is, but how do we find her? I'm not quite sure, but it's highly unlikely she's left the house. Nine times out of ten, ghosts are inherently tied to the place where they died. Maybe... Just maybe... Guys, I really appreciate the enthusiasm for Dave the Ghost and the missing Sonia mystery, but it's one o'clock in the bloody morning. Can you take your weird foreplay elsewhere? He always has to spoil things, doesn't he? Okay, we'll reconvene in the morning. I'm going to do a bit more looking around online before getting some sleep, but I'll see you both in the morning. Good night. Good night. (sighs) Night. Hello. Without my cashmere, I had to melt him on his skull whilst cooking him on my pot. Julia, is that you? Julia? The thing about <coughs> cameraman's bones is that they're strong from holding up cameras all the time. <gasps> Lot bacon, Dan. Mm. Mm. Yes, please. I tell you, it's nice to cook for somebody again. Ever since my husband died, cooking has lost all its appeal. Mm. Well, you're a very good cook. Gifted, some might say. Oh, why, thank you, dear. Reg always used to say I was gifted with me hands. But I somehow don't think he were referring to me cooking. Morning, all. Morning, love. Would you like some breakfast? Oh, yes, please. Bacon, sausage, eggs and fried tomatoes, okay? Sounds good to me. Where's Abigail? Probably just having a lion. Oh, are you sure you two aren't an item? Those little glances you were stealing at each other during the Ouija board? It would just like me Reg and me. Or Susan and her pole cleaner. Wait, what was that about her aunt? Oh, I'm not a gossip, dear. But you and Abigail... No, no, it's, it, it's not like that at all. We're merely friends. Oh, I'm not one to judge, dear. But if the sheets need washing, I'd rather you do that yourself if it's all the same to you. <coughs> nope, there'll be no need. Uh, trust me. So you've not seen her all morning, then? No, I, I just assumed she was sleeping. Julia, have you seen Abigail this morning? No. And have you tried looking for her? No, I, I haven't been out of bed long. Well, we need to find her. She's been acting rather strangely and... Here you go, dear. And, uh... Although I suppose another ten minutes won't hurt. She can't have gone too far. (laughs) Okay, I guess Abigail is here. I guess so. (laughs) I wonder what's so funny. Who knows? Hmm. Well, she, she must be watching the telly. Oh, God knows I've missed telly these last few weeks. I can't say I have. It's mostly just rubbish and repeats on these days. Look, you're just watching the wrong channels, mate. Plus, plus, there's plenty of good stuff on the streaming services these days. What a load of crap. She's awfully animated this morning, isn't she? Yeah. Who let this shower of bastards into Parliament? Shoot the lot of them. Bit early for politics, isn't it? We should probably check on her. Yeah, let's go. Abigail, are you... No, go away! It's us. Ah! It's us. No, go away, go away! Ah! Well, she's not usually that aggressive in the morning, is she? Not really, no. Uh, Also, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? What, aside from Abigail waking up on the wrong side of the bed? No. The TV wasn't switched on. I may have missed that. You're a great detective. Shut up. Did you notice where she was sat? Reg's armchair. That's not Abigail in there, is it? Hmm. Get out of my house! Get out of my house! Yep. Definitely not Abigail. Eh, Jory's still out. Bloody hell, what's all this screaming about? The neighbours will think I've had Bob and Jeremy round here again. I don't even know where to start with that one. So, what's happened to Abigail? 
She is sitting in your old husband's armchair, laughing her head off and talking at a television that's not even switched on. Well, go and switch it on for her then. No! Oh, it's no trouble. There you Christian go, Connors, my dear. The DNA evidence shows you are not the father of this baby Sasquatch. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Yes! No child support! In your face, you furry slag! Oh no, let's turn off this rubbish. Oh, I've not seen this in years. I'll go and grab some drinks. Out of the way, my dears. Huh. James, humour me a second. How so? Step into the living room, would you? Okay. Just as I thought. She's not afraid of Julia, but she is afraid of us. What? Abigail, we mean you no harm. Get out of my house! Will you stop making her shout? What will the neighbours think? Forget the neighbours. Abigail is possessed. Well, can't you both do something before she's sick all over my new carpets? I'm not entirely sure what we can do. An exorcism would be risky, and we don't have the supplies. We may have some materials on us that could help. Dan, you go check upstairs. I'll have a look in the boot of the car, quick. I mean, I'll look, but I'm pretty certain there's nothing up there. Just look anyway. We've got to get Sonia out of Abigail. On earth was that noise? Dan, was that you? Uh, Dan, what was that noise? I don't know. Dan! Oh. Dan, are you alright? I, um, I just... Dan, wake up, mate. Oh, hey now, what do you think you're playing at? Well, that's certainly different. Has he always been Irish? No, but he has suffered a lot of head trauma as of late. I'll give you some head trauma in a minute. Slapping me like that, the d- d- nerve. I think we need to get you to a hospital. But what about Abigail? <laughs> I don't think she's going anywhere. Now, come on, Dan, we really should get you into the car. Why the bleeding hell do you keep calling me Dan? More to the point, where am I? Has he got amnesia? Oh, no. Not another one. Let me guess, you're Dave, aren't you? How do you know my name? Ouija board, glass, little sheets of paper, ringing any bells. Christ, I thought that was a dream. Sadly not. This is very much real, and I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you're very much dead. I thought that might have been the case. Do you remember anything? Well, I was was driving down a road, and then nothing. Hang on. What road were it? Uh, King George, I think. Oh, I know who you are. You were knocked into the river and killed. It's been all over the news. Really? (laughs) Did they show my picture? They did. You were very dishy. Well, it has been known. Right. Before this becomes an ethical and possibly legal nightmare that I'll be an accessory to, we need to get you out of that body before something happens to Dan. Thank you. Um... James. James Hunter. Oh, like the author. You know his work. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. A lot of old cobblers about ghosts. Although, that said... Given the circumstances, maybe there was some truth in it. Quite. Honestly, mate, this is so bizarre. You're telling me? I'm used to a quiet life living here. Then all this ghost malarkey starts. Ghosts? As in plural? Yes, you're not the only dead person roaming around this house. Oh, wait. It's coming back to me now. Is she the woman that was hiding in the airing cupboard? So that's where she was hiding, then. Did you not think to check the airing cupboard? That's the first place I'd have looked. Airing cupboards aren't exactly the kind of place you would expect to find a ghost. Not unless they died in one, of course. Okay, so if I died in that crash, how on earth did I get here? I think I may be able to explain that. There are reports of people bringing spirits back with them from cemeteries. Spirits often find themselves drawn to their resting places and then latch on to someone else when they feel themselves fading. 
I'd hazard a guess that your spirit had latched on to Julia while she was visiting her late husband's grave. I don't remember doing that, though. You likely won't. It's not something I can explain, but your mind doesn't work the same way it did when you were alive. There's going to be gaps and entire days missing. So what do I do now? Well, you can't remain inside Dan's body. I know it may seem tempting to be corporeal again, but I somewhat doubt that Dan would be the most desirable of hosts. <laughs> Are you cold, dear? I can turn the radiators up. No, it's just that when you insulted Dan, I think I felt him lashing out. Oh, fantastic. You're still in there then, deputy. Well, I feel like the sooner we separate you two, the better. Are we going to have to do an exorcism? Yeah, I don't like the sound of that. Typically, that would be the thing to do, but it may be a little bit cruel as Dave is a friendly ghost, and in my experience, exorcisms seem incredibly painful for both the living and the dead. Okay, then we are most definitely not doing that. Do you remember how you ended up inside him? I saw him on the landing, and I rushed towards him. I, I wanted him to help me. I don't quite know how it happened, but the next thing I know, I'm at the bottom of the stairs. I, I think he may have broken his arm. Oh, that's probably from the exorcism the other night. I wouldn't worry about it. Are exorcisms a regular occurrence for you? D d hold on, who are you? I'm the author you slated earlier. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. Don't worry about it. Those books were dreadful. Now, I can't be certain about it, but I feel like Dan and Abigail have been more susceptible to possession due to the absolute bastard of a month we've been having. So, like how you get ill when you run down? Essentially, yes. Also, the signal, no doubt, has something to do with it. Oh, what's the signal? It's a whole thing. Don't worry about it. What I want to know is, why Sonia ran away? Well, is it because of me? I'd imagine so. Sonia's quiet life of watching soaps with Julia here is suddenly interrupted by the arrival of a stranger, which in some ways echoes the way she died. She was murdered? Strangled to death in the living room. In my front room? Oh, yes, we forgot to mention that. You're telling me I live in a murder house? No offence here, Julia, but where did you think ghosts came from? So she's been hiding from me because she thinks I'm a killer? I wouldn't take it personally. Oh, well, where is she now? She's holed up in the living room watching TV. Should I go talk to her? I think that's all we really can do at this point. Uh, hello? I'm not quite sure what to do here, guys. Knock again. <clears throat> uh, hello there, miss. Go away. Look, I'm going to open the door now. I said go away. Look, I'm opening the door, so... Hello there. Stay away from me. Look, I'm, I'm not here to hurt you. Stay away from me. That better not be one of my dolphins. Something tells me this is not going to work. We have to keep trying. Otherwise, I'll never get my colleagues back. Well, you best think of summer. I don't want her smashing up any more of my ornaments. Christ, who would have thought being dead would have been such a hassle? Fine. Uh, Sonia, is it? That's your name, isn't it? How do you know my name? Why are you in my house? Well, my name's Dave, and it appears that we're now housemates. No, you're lying. You're here to hurt me again. No, I assure you, I'm not here to harm you. I'm just like you. No, you're not. You're just like him. You've come here to hurt me. I promise you, hand on my heart, I'm not here to harm you. Look, I know this is not an ideal situation for either of us, but we're both dead and... I know that I'm dead. I was murdered in this fucking room. I'm not sure this is going well, James. Perhaps a bit more sensitivity is in order. <sighs> okay. Look, Sonia. Can I call you Sonia? I suppose... What happened to you was awful. Truly, truly awful. And I know that you're afraid. I'm afraid too. I've only just learnt I'm dead. And let me tell you, it's not a barrel of laughs. You don't understand. No, I do. No, you don't. Do you know what it feels like to have the one place you're supposed to be safe become the place you're murdered? You're right. I don't understand what that's like. But believe me when I say that I want to understand. Because whether you like it or not, we're both stuck here. So instead of hiving away from one another... We may as well get to know each other. Because aside from that lovely Julia over there, we only really have each other now, don't we? 
I'll think about it. Well, there really isn't much time to think about things. We've overtaken these fine people's bodies, and I imagine they want them back. Look, can I come in? You can, but keep your distance. Okay. See? Nothing to worry about. I feel safer like this. It's nice to feel warmth again, and not just from those bloody radiators that she insists on having on all the time. Just human warmth. Being in your own skin. Even though I know this isn't my skin. (laughs) It's strange to feel human again, isn't it? How long have you been dead? Uh, Not long. You? A while now. (laughs) Do you ever get used to it? Eventually. Well... Do you think you could help me? I'm not sure there's much I can do. Just being here is enough. I'm sorry I threw a dolphin at you. Ah, it's okay. Although you may need to apologise to Julia for that one. As long as it weren't the one in a sombrero, that's fine. Was it wearing a sombrero? I think it was, yeah. (laughs) Well, what's she going to do? It's not like she can kill us or anything. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe she'll get the Ghostbusters in or something. (laughs) Maybe. But if Julia does decide to send us to the great beyond, we'll go together, yeah? Do we have a deal? Fine. Oh, where am I? Dan? Yeah? Why are we in the living room? Uh. And why are we watching crappy old sitcoms? I'm not quite sure. Uh, Are you incredibly tired? (sighs) Yeah, now that you mention it. Been a bloody awful week, hasn't it? Yeah, terrible week. Terrible few weeks. Uh Uh-huh. We should, um, probably get some, uh, sleep. (sighs) Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, aren't they cute together? Yeah, makes you feel a bit sick, doesn't it? A little bit, yeah. Fancy another drink? I thought you'd never ask. Oh, it's a lovely sunny day. Yeah, quite nice, actually. Really not a fan. Nobody forced you to stay up all night drinking with Julia, you know. It wasn't all night. It was just most of the night. Did I hear karaoke at one point? I don't want to talk about it. If it's any consolation, you made a cracking Olivia Newton-John. Thank you. Now let's never speak of this again. Oh, what a lovely morning it is. If I were 20 years younger, I'd have gone for a run. How on earth are you still standing after last night? Oh, it takes more than that to put me down, dear. You all set? Yep, all packed and ready to go. I really cannot thank you enough for helping me. Now, are you sure you can't stay any longer? We've got plenty of food in the freezer and wine in the cellar. Sadly, our services are required elsewhere. Plus, I'm not sure James could survive any more nights on the source with you. Oh, not many men can, dear. It's been a while since I did shots. Leave me alone. Such a pity. I'd just gotten used to the house being so full of life again. Well, it's not like you'll be without company now with Dave and Sonia around. This is true. It's nice to know they're there, but it's no substitute for the warmth that you three have brought to the house. That's very sweet of you to say. It's been a pleasure, Julia. Thank you so much for your help. There's no need to thank us. It's what we do. Right, that's enough pleasantries. I need to lie down in the car. Drive safe. God bless. Bye! Bye. I'll tell you what, I'm going to miss sleeping in a nice, comfy bed. The food wasn't too bad either. And Julia was lovely once you got to know her. I'll say. Wait. Oh, you, you didn't. A gentleman never tells. That's... Probably the closest thing we're going to get to a holiday for quite some time, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the sooner we stop, Carl, the sooner we can all kick back on the beach with a cocktail and a good book. God, that sounds good, doesn't it? A couple of ice-cold beers, a good mystery book. Never took you for a fan of reading. 
I'll have you know I'm very well read. Comics don't count. They're graphic novels. Nerd. Says you. Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter, Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin, and Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Linda Clark, Johnny Buxton, Rory Jocelyn, Benton Hodges, David Anthony Green, with David Gardner. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next week for the next exciting chapter of Haunted, the audio drama.